Ripley in South Carolina. So thank you for joining us. So I hope most of you made it in time for the groundbreaking ceremony today. Uh, it was a big, big event for us Mercedes uh, and also for South Carolina. We are very proud that uh, we will have a dedicated facility here in the United States where we'll produce a sprinter in the US for the US. And I always say that with a little chuckle, then we are not just born to run our tagline. We're actually born in the United States, born in the USA. So we're very proud and uh, I'm glad you made that today. Uh, and you saw already um, you know, some of the exciting things uh, which you're gonna drive tomorrow. So let's dive right into it. Uh, welcome to Charleston. Thanks for video first. <laughs> because it captures really the way we position vans here in the United States. You know, Mercedes-Benz vans are tough, they're hardworking, they're, but they're also approachable, reliable, and they're just for the everyday, hardworking um, plumber, electrician, vocational business. So I think this really brings a, uh, across the essence of how we position our, our commercial van division here in the United States. While talking about commercial vans, uh, I'm not going to go too far back in history, but I think it's really important. I think everybody in this room knows uh, the car was invented 130 years ago. And who invented it? Obviously, Benson Daimler, they invented it 1886. But, but the important thing on this slide is only 10 years afterwards, the first applications of these two gentlemen were already in the commercial business. So only 10 years after they invented the car, they already thought about uh, commercial applications and you see here some type of a, a transportation um, van and then you see down here it's almost the, f the first predecessor of the first van in 1898. So, so vans is, is, is not just in the US, it's maybe pretty new here, but commercial vans in Europe is 120 years old. So that goes far back in our history. Now fast forward, really fast forward in the van's history. This is probably the first van type of looking van uh, which is from 1955 and let me skip to the next slide this is where we show it next to others so there's on the left side of this uh, l319 from 1955 which is really kind of almost a predecessor uh, of, of, of a van the grand grand grandfather of a van of today there is uh, one engine which is a pre-war uh, pre-war vehicle we call it the l300 this was really the first it's almost a station wagon type of a delivery van. It has a diesel engine, that's why we also show it to you. It has 32 horsepower in 1932. Doesn't sound like a lot, but why I bring it up is here because we also have a very long history in diesel engines in our uh, commercial vans. If you look at our today's offering, we have two diesel engines in our Sprinter van today. We have four cylinder and six of them, so this goes way back in history as well. And if you then look to the right side, the red vehicle, obviously this is our today's Sprinter version, which is now, and I forgot the year again, Matthias, 19? 95. 1995, this is when the Sprinter was launched here. So I think that uh, the, the summary here is Daimler is actually the world's largest manufacturer of commercial vehicles. And obviously we just don't do vans. Uh, we also have other uh, commercial vehicles in our lineup. Here's um, a breakdown of the sales worldwide. If you look at the commercial business of uh, Mercedes-Benz or of Daimler uh, worldwide, obviously there's a, a full range of, of brands. Some of them you might be actually familiar with. Everybody knows Mercedes-Benz buses, Mercedes-Benz um, heavy-duty trucks. If you travel in Europe or other parts of the country, you see them everywhere. Not in the United States, but uh, outside the United States, we, we sell Class 8 heavy-duty trucks. Uh, we have Thomas Built bus here, then we have Satra buses. If you looked at the buses today where we shuttled you out to this white tent site, these were actually Satra buses. They come from the southern region of southern Germany. These are luxury travel buses, coaches, which we are selling uh, mostly in Europe, obviously. Fuso uh, in the Asian markets, and here, obviously, uh, our brand for heavy-duty trucks in the United States is Freightliner. So we have several brands in the commercial world. 
And if you add up all these uh, sales, uh, 33,000 bus sales, over 500,000 truck sales worldwide, <coughs> and then the big number here, last year, the van division sold three, more than 320,000 units worldwide. I'll break that down to the US in a second. But if you add this all up, this is, this is over 850,000 commercial vehicles sold worldwide under Dunlop events, and that makes us the largest commercial vehicle manufacturer worldwide. Now, um, when I mentioned 321,000 units, this number was also mentioned earlier today, this is a worldwide number of last year, and this is achieved with our three products, the lineup of the three products which we offer worldwide. That's our bread and butter model, everybody knows the Sprinter, this is the core, the backbone of our business, this is the majority of these sales, it's the Sprinter model, but we also sell worldwide already since two or three generations. The Vito, as we call it outside the United States, it's a mid-size van. We just launched the mid-size van, we call it the Metris here in the United States in October of last year. So we just added a second product to line up to the van business here in the United States. And then outside the US, also in most of the European market, we have a small van, it's called the Citan. So if you, uh, if you add all of these sales together, more than 321,000 units worldwide. So where do we produce these? Uh, today, marked in red, let me start at the bottom. We're very proud of Charleston. Today it's an assembly facility, because you guys are all familiar with the kind of complicated logistic process which we are currently under. We completely manufacture the car, mostly in Düsseldorf. Then we disassemble it still in Europe, put it in two different boxes, put these boxes on two different ships, these two ships come to back together at the port of Charleston. This is where we unload these two boxes. Bring the two boxes to Charleston, where you guys were today. Take out the parts out of these two boxes and reassemble the exact van which we produced in Düsseldorf back here in Charleston. And then we'll ship it to our customers here. So this is a pretty complicated process, but we have to do that in order to uh, comply with the processes, otherwise we would have to, um, we are subdued to a 25% import tax, which would make the business impossible in the United States. Now with the new factory, this is, we will be all gone, and we will be producing in the United States for the United States. Obviously all the logistics will be faster, we can react quicker to our customer demands, there will be a lot of advantages which we all talked about today and earlier. But we don't have just production facilities, which I mentioned now in Charleston and in Dusseldorf. This is our biggest plant where um, the, the cargo and the passenger vans are coming from. In Germany, we also have a plant in the Ludwigsfelder, which is close to Berlin. This is where the cap chassis come from. And then for some local markets, we have a, a plant in Nizhny Novgorod, which is in Russia, where we still produce for the Russian market only the classic Sprinter, which is the previous generation, we call it the T1N. Uh, we have a production facility in China, in Fuzhou, that will produce this generation spreader. Then headquarters for all the research development and also where all our bosses are located is obviously in Stuttgart, how it should be, right in the heart of the center in Unterturkan. Uh, but we also have uh, a plan in Spain. This is where our metros comes from, or the V-classes or the Vitos for the rest of the world. They come from Spain. Uh, and we have in South America, in Argentina, Buenos Aires, uh, one, another facility to produce the Sprinter for the local market there. So, um, worldwide plant locations all over the world. Let's zoom in on the S yes market. 321,000 units worldwide. Uh, it was mentioned today, but I want to point it out one more time. The US is the second biggest market after Germany for the van division. So this is how important this, important this market is for vans. The numbers we're showing here goes back to 2010 because we're only five years old. Only five years ago, we started selling the Sprinter van under the brand Mercedes-Benz. We go back more in history, but we had we sold the Sprinter under different brands. We sold under Dodges, under Freightliners, uh, but uh, uh, as under, under Mercedes-Benz only t uh, only five years ago. And we started out with about 8,500 units back in 2010. And last year, we sold almost 30,000 units. So that's a tremendous growth in just five years uh, with our van division here. Uh, that's 15 over 14, a growth of 16%. I mentioned that earlier today. And if you look where we are, 16 year to date, uh, halfway through the year, we had a very strong uh, June. Uh, sales were up 26% versus last June of last year. 
And in a year-to-date basis, uh, our van sales in the United States are actually up 16.5% versus year-to-date last year. So sales are um, really doing very well. And um, we are also setting records since five years. You just look at the chart, you know, we, we are outselling the previous years, now five years in a row. And I think I'm not going out too far on a limb that we will set another record by the end of this year. And we will outpace 15 sales numbers again this year and 16 by the end of the year. So business is good, but we heavily also rely obviously on our dealer network. And I just want to talk quickly about our partners, our dealer partners here in the United States. We currently have not even 300 dealers here in the United States. Now 286 to be exact, that's the number on the chart. Now if you contrast that to a domestic um, competitor like a Ford, they have a network of 3,000 dealers. We'll never be able to compete, not that we want to compete, you know, with the sheer number of outlets of dealer points they have. So our dealers are, um, the best dealers in terms of sales and service. So we have the most trained and highly qualified dealers and they provide the best customer experience for our customers and this is how we differentiate ourselves from uh, different uh, from our competitors. So highly trained dealers, we also have, we have a combined network of Sprinter and Freightliner dealers, I think I mentioned it. We sell the Sprinter here in the United States uh, as, as Mercedes-Benz and we also sell them under the Freightliner brand based on our history. Moving forward, uh, another thing we're really uh, proud of, and we have um, somebody from AOG here in the room, so uh, thank you, call out to you guys here. Uh, our sprinters and our metrics now as well uh, receives uh, awards. You know, I can take, I can talk all day long how great a sprinter is, but you know, just look at, we also like, we, we always like to, to uh, show you some third party validation, and what better validation can you get than an AOG residue value award? Uh, and we just received another one. I think we have the 2016 AOG Residual Value Award for the Sprinter. Metris also achieved it. And I think uh, what I, why I bring this up is because AOG rewards uh, 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 manufacturers or vehicles when they achieve after three years the highest residual. And you only can do that if you have the right combination in the market between product offering, between price point, and between volume. There's a lot of more going into that, but it shows us that really we command after three years of ownership the highest residual in the market and that's a good sign especially in our business high residuals are very good for our business I'll talk to that in a second and that brings me to the to the other award which she showed here it's called the Vincentric fleet value award and I'm just gonna mention that quickly uh, if you if you think you're a plumber and you're running your plumbing business you're gonna have a very sharp pencil you're gonna calculate how much late my three bands which I have out there how much does it cost me to tank them, to fuel them, to maintain them, to fix them, to run them? Uh, the total cost of ownership.